I played with him one year, and there's there's two great memories I have of Patty as he joins us on the line. One is just hearing that cute French accent ask about muscle milk. Do you guys know anything about muscle milk in the locker room at the Pepsi Center or the Northtown Center now and the Argyle sweater? Patty Lalim. <laughs> oh, good morning, boys. Uh, well, I got good news for you. So maybe, maybe the next time we'll be on, I might have a surprise for you for one of those topics. But uh, uh, Do you still the, have the, the sweater, don't milk? you? Oh, yes, I do. I found that out the other day, and I was like, oh, I'll, when, I, when it will be a good time, I'll put it on again. I think it's, it, it still fits pretty nicely on me, although you, you stretch it out a bit. <clears throat> Well, that's, that's kind of what I was going to say, was that I stretched it out so much that if you nicely fit it now, that's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess <laughs> I, I put on a couple, well, maybe five or ten pounds, I don't know. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it's the muscle milk that got to me. I think that put on a little bit more muscles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks for joining us, buddy. Go ahead, River. Patty Laleem. I, we just have to get this, you know, let's get right after it. Petey has been sitting here bragging, and you can tell me if this is truthful or no truth to it. Hey, Did let he me just like- say this, Patty. He pretends <laughs> to forget everything, but he always remembers what he wants to remember. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Oh, I, Go ahead. Yes, I know what Listen. you mean, but I'm looking forward to hear this. Oh, okay. I don't. No, it's not he- true. He, he keeps on telling me that he used to light you up every single practice. Now, I just want you to be honest with me. You know, it's been a long time since we all played together. Was, was Andrew Peters lighting up anybody at that time? Well, let's make something straight. And I'm talking for myself. You know, you get to a point, Revs, and, and you know that. When you see guys who lose all their confidence and all that stuff, and especially at the end of my career in Buffalo, what's your job? What's part of your job every day? It keeps everybody happy, you know? And when you see a guy who needs to score a little more in games, well, in practice, what do you want to do? You want to make him happy. And when Petey's happy, everybody else around the team is happy. So let's say, let's say yes, he probably did score a few, but let's say I did help it. All these years later, Patty, and I got to go and tell my kid that I'm a fraud. <laughs> no. Yeah, well, tell them you had very good no. hands. I'll, See, I'll I have a different. I have a different theory, say. Patty. I have a different theory. Because at your time, your time when we were in Buffalo, we were doing a lot of extra work together, and I always thought that, you know, when you're doing it so often every day, <laughs> that eventually you're going to get lucky. Yeah. Well, that that you, that you did a couple of times. I'll give you a couple of those. <laughs> And there was, there, there was the other thing, too, that when we played that game, that keep away or two pass, whatever, that whenever at some point you guys scored, the game was over because it could last forever with Jeep, you know? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, at least we were lucky enough to play it. Hey, uh, Patty, you know, what, what, Riv? I see you looking at me. You just, he's got the stare. See, Patty, you can't see us because we're, we're talking on Skype. And Pat and, and Riv's just been just been waiting and waiting. Did you tell him to say that? No, I'm just gonna tell. This just makes me feel so good because <laughs> I did not see that perspective coming. And Patty Laleem, we talked about him, one of the greatest teammates of all time. Now you understand why you actually scored. It's all to give you the confidence that you needed. Let me tell you something, Patty. Oh. You were you were you were wonderful at doing that apparently because every time I did and I pulled something sweet off I'd say that's the guy who had the 14 and 0 streak from his rookie from his rookie start. <laughs> There's one thing I must say it's uh you, you get to a point too because you love celebrating even in practice when you score because you don't score too often and and some point you you just don't want to see the celebration so it was getting a, a big of a, a rivalry on the ice a little bit, too, even in practice, because at the end of the day, you get some pride and you don't want to see the guy celebrate when he scores. So we had some good battles. 
Did, did you, <clears throat> you might have thrown your stick at me once. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Only one? It, it, it was low. It, it was a low <laughs> swing. But, but it, you got a lot of, you got a lot of distance with it. Hey, uh, Patty Laleem joining us. Riv, uh, Riv reached out to you this morning. And in, in all seriousness, I mean, we, we kid around. But in, in that year, in the one year that we played together, you know, something significant in Buffalo happened. And, and it was February 12th. And I know that I learned of the incident coming in and hearing you tell the story about, I think it was your your brother or your brother-in-law was in town who saw the plane crash in, in Clarence and, you know, they're re-airing the game tonight on uh, on MSG um, as a Sabre Classic. And what do you remember from that night, from the next morning, throughout the game day, the game itself, and the result? Yeah, well, it's, it's still a moment that uh, feels like it was just a few days old because uh, my brother-in-law was on his way actually from Peterborough. And uh, it was around, I would say, around 10, 10.30 at night, right around that time. And he was coming in, and he was bringing luggage in the house. And I was bringing luggage down in the basement. And all I remember is his wife screaming, call 911, call 911. So I'm going upstairs, and I'm thinking, he had three kids. I had three kids. They were very young. So I figure something happened to the kids. And he's he's running in, and he's like, plane crash plane crash and i'm like what is going on here i know the path was like right over our neighborhood basically and uh so he, he opened the door and he'd show me and and from our house we could see right through uh you know the the village of clarence center we can see fire and i was like no way so he, he was basically explaining what happened is he was picking up luggage in his car and he kind of he, he, he kind of heard the, the noise of the plane that was in trouble, and he kind of turned around, and he thought it was coming right into the neighborhood. And uh, luckily, it didn't, but uh, it, it did hit the neighborhood, as you all know. And uh, so when it happened, I was like, no way. So we tried to call 911, but uh, people were on the line already, and uh, we we drove up like right to it and uh like it was right in front of uh the fire station basically in clarence center like two houses down and all we could see was like i i still remember seeing a basketball net uh and the tail of the plane and the fire and i was like no way this is not happening and uh at the time you don't know what the that what the damage How? are and uh yep how far were you away from the actual plane crash? Well, like straight line is about, I think it was like 600 meters, but it was like one point something if you had to go around and come back into Clarence Center. But straight line, we could see it. Like there was no leaves uh, in the trees at that time, obviously, and we could see right through. And uh, so it, it was it's something we thought when we when we move into that neighborhood too we saw all the planes all the time and you know you just look at them and you're like okay and uh when that happened and all of a sudden it was like oh man like i, I remember calling palmer at that time too during the night and i was like palmer like this is unbelievable what happened and i just couldn't go to bed like uh the wife everybody was like on shock and uh just trying to recover from that and uh I remember the the next day uh, when we got up, like you could still see smoke uh, coming out of there from our house. Uh, we went to the rink, uh, still in shock, you know, trying to figure out what exactly happened. And uh, I remember the FBI came over and knocked on the door and uh, talked to my brother. And now we finally got to them and, and uh, told them his part of the story. So uh, they came over and uh, they sat down a little bit and I was like, oh, wow, this like not the kind of uh, visit you want to have, basically. And uh, obviously it was, it was just a sad day for for Buffalo, for Clarence Center, for for everybody, you know, like just a tough day to remember. Do you remember going to the rink the next the next day? Obviously, you know being there with morning we didn't i don't even think we had a morning skate um no you know do you do you remember sitting in the dressing room 
Um, you have to understand, uh, you know, for the people that are listening, a large number of our entire team lived, you know, hundreds and hundreds of meters from the plane crash. More than over half our team lived very, very close. You know, do you remember the mood that was in the dressing room that day? Yeah, well, everybody was like in shock, and like it, it crossed everybody's mind. You know, like I said, when when you move into the neighborhood a little bit and you see the planes and all that stuff, and and when that happened the next morning, like I remember in the room, like nobody could, you know, understand, and uh, it it was like. Uh, what can I say? Like very foggy, like for everybody, like you just sit down and you're like, this is not happening, isn't it? And uh, I remember we didn't have a morning skate and we were trying to figure out how we going to be able to play that night. I was kind of happy not to, to to be playing that day because I just thought it would be like so tough to concentrate on the game. And uh, it happened to be a Friday the 13th. I remember to a, uh, on that Friday against San Jose. Uh, so it was just a very emotional, uh, I would say 24 hours nonstop, just uh, from what, when that happened until after the game. And even then afterwards, like uh, I don't think everything was the same afterwards. Yeah. You know, um, playing the game that night, did you, did you play in that game or was it Millsy? No, it was Millsy. Yeah. And what was what was your thought like being in the building that night? Almost like I don't know how you felt about this, but it it felt like I felt like I was sick to my stomach. With all the emotion yeah. uh, of of the entire day, did you did you feel like we should have been playing that night? No. I, I that's what I was try to find to figure out you know like it was such a big moment uh such a moment that uh, i felt i i was part of uh, just a little bit of you know away but just just the thought of that day that how many people were touched by that uh, sad moment uh across the city across the country because uh, that's a big tragedy when something like that happened and that we were living like right next to it, and you realize how lucky you are, you know, to uh, to to still enjoy the, the days. And I I thought it was just a tough moment, even for me on the bench. Uh, just tried to put my mind into uh, real life, in uh, even more into a hockey game. I, I wasn't even sure are you guys were able to, uh, to, to, to play that night uh, with all the emotions that were going through. Everybody felt, because it's a small community, you know, Clarence Center, Clarence, Buffalo, uh, overall, it's, it's a small community and everybody is very close to each other. And when something like that happened, even though we were from uh, all over the world, like a lot of people live in Clarence Center and a lot of people were just, Still, if you say a, a place where I played hockey and I really enjoyed, and we almost stay there afterwards, was uh, exactly that neighborhood where we live. Because uh, a lot of guys were living there, and the fr the people there were so awesome. So it was a close knit community that uh, you know got touched by a big tragedy. Patty Laleem, uh joining us here, and and Patty, thanks again, eh, for the for the short notice and. Uh... Uh, availability we appreciate that but I I, I want to keep asking you about this tonight obviously for those maybe just tuning in on MSG the Sabres classic game will be from February 13th 2009 the night after flight 3407 crashed in Clarence and uh, you know Patty Laleem joining us he was obviously on the team um, lived in Clarence um, so you know a, a, a very uh, uh, unique tie-in um, what was what was the I mean I can ask Riv but I I don't know that we've asked you and it's always good to hear from other Can you remember any one guy you know name names or don't it doesn't matter I mean but or number of guys like and and what their moods were like I mean you know getting ready for the game was it a obviously I think we've established it was a different feeling and things like that but but Lindy, like, for, for instance, I mean, did he say anything before? Like, I wasn't dressed that night. So when he comes in, does he, 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 Lindy, 
Lindy was very emotional. He lived out in Clarence for a very long time. Um, I remember we didn't see him much in the morning. He came in and addressed the team, as you guys mentioned. But what was he like, you know, throughout the course of the game? Was his demeanor different on the bench, uh, the players? I mean, what was what was all that like? Because, you know, you not playing, you had a you had an interesting standpoint taking it all in and watching it all. Yeah, well, I, I think, and, and you're right about that, Lindy, too, that uh, was a big part of uh, the community. Uh, everybody was was not the same. I, I didn't think, well, you, you try to make the best of it with, with what you had, and you, you try to play for a reason, I think, at that point, when you figure out the game was going on. Uh, you try to put your mind into it, but I, I didn't think it was... Uh, it, it was the same feeling as uh, any other game, you know. Uh, I, I think everybody was uh, was in a different mood, and and I still try to. I remember that the game was a high scoring game, but I I still try to think about all that, and it seems to me like it was a twenty four hour where nothing made sense really, you know, like the perspective of. Uh, uh, of life that you had before seeing something like that and the perspective, especially at that moment, uh, what you had to deal with uh, mentally. I think everybody was touched. And I remember Palmer, when I called him that night and I said that, and like Palmer was like, no way. Like, like everybody was in shock. Everybody was trying to get back to his sense and trying to push that aside for a moment and try to play hockey. But uh, I, I still think it was a big part of the game, although, you know, it, it, it just had a big influence on the whole evening and the whole day. Yeah, yeah. amazing stuff, Patty. Amazing stuff. Um, how's that everything going? Uh, that being said, just to add, I, I do believe that that game that we played – and how hard our team played for the fans, for uh, all of Buffalo, to basically win that game the way that we did against the best team in the National Hockey League at the time. I mean, the emotional roller coaster in that game was was something special, and I and I believe that the people walking away we're able to put a smile on their face for, for just a couple minutes, you know? And um, that's the reason why we played that game. That's the reason why we played that game to kind of, you know, give these people an opportunity to um, take their mind of waste, uh, away from something so tragic. So that's, my, that's one thing that I'm most pleased with, with, with how that our team reacted how we all came together and, and we won that game for, for Buffalo. Well said. Uh, that, that, that's a very good point, seriously. Everybody rallied together for a reason, for a good reason. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't remember that the Sharks were the best team in the league at that time. It just shows a lot, you know, when you, you rally together for, for a good cause uh, in those uh, moments that uh, what you can accomplish and achieve. I uh, I still think Palmer should have let you have credit for that goal, Riff, for that shot from the point. I could care less, man. I was more I, I was more pleased with that thing going in the net. I, I I can't. I think there was only like five or six seconds left, maybe, or and and just to see yeah. that that puck go in the net. It doesn't matter how it gets in there. It's just uh, you know. Obviously, Palmer and his ability to just be one of those awesome goal scorers at the time that you need it. I mean, we needed it at that time, and Palmer came up big. Mr. Clutch, Patty, everything good in your world? Everything's all right? Yeah, everything uh, is pretty quiet here, uh, as I'm sure it is uh, all over the world right now. But everybody's doing well. Everybody's healthy. And uh, we make the best of it, uh, family time. And as far as uh, as work, we're doing uh, uh, vintage games right now. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing uh, Montreal 76, 77, 78, 79, starting tomorrow recording. So I'm doing a lot of homework right now for, for, for those uh, good years when Montreal won four cups in a row. Jacques Lemaire. 
Here we go. Was that was that uh, was that the Guy Lafleur era? Yeah, where Guy Lafleur was like top scorer like three years in a row, and Jean, he was playing with Jacques Lemaire. Uh, the the those guys were very good, and uh, you had Ken Dryden, you had the big three on defense: Savar, uh, Lapointe, and uh, Robinson. Obviously, those were big dogs, and. Uh, uh, they had such a good team. Yvan Cornoyer was playing with Lemaire and Lafleur. That was a good line. Uh, you know, so many good players at that time. Hey, uh, did you guys, I, Riv, I think you played for Jacques, right? Uh, Jacques Lemaire? Yeah. Patty, no. did you play for Jacques Lemaire? No, I didn't. I wish. I wish, though, when I saw I... what he did with uh, his teams defensively, the, the goalies that played for you know, they, they always look pretty good, you know, in that system. Well, I watched him the other night then on a Sabre Classic game, um, the old Sabres, and I can tell you, I just played one year for him. And you watch the way he plays, and then you figure out how he coaches, and you just you, you instantly get why all of his teams have success. I mean, the guy was – he's unbelievable. He was unbelievable. My yeah. brother and I were – we're watching and talking about a game from the 50s. Go back and watch the 50s Montreal Canadiens. They were they were swinging. They were they were like it was unbelievable. They were playing the 1-2-2 two, two back then. It was absolutely incredible. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Old yeah. school hockey, 50s hockey. Go watch 50s hockey, Patty, and tell me if you'd yeah. rather watch if if you like that game better than today's game or even the 80s or 90s. It was incredible. Incredible. Yeah, it was anyway, pretty, it was it was yeah I know it was Montreal was that was their big thing eh like with Scotty Bowman behind the bench and all that stuff the way they played the the way they they clogged up the middle kind of push everybody aside you know protect the house uh, they, uh, they they had it all though when you look at that team like defense offense they could play physical they could do it all that was, they, those were good days for Montreal. Well, when you watch original six games, you're watching, they're all studs, right? Because there's only six teams. So, it, you know, it's like it's really best on best. But, Patty, thank you so much for your time today, man. We'd love to have you on again soon. It would be my pleasure. I'll, I'll, I'll be ready for a FaceTime next time. I'll be dressed for the occasion. Get the Skype going. Get the Skype going. Okay, we're going. We're taking it all the way back to uh, 2007 here with the Skype. Okay, so yep. get the Skype, get the Skype downloaded on the on the computer, and we'll and we'd love to see you in the Argyle sweater. How nicely you're filling it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds great. Just for you boys, I'll wear it again. Oh, you are off. the man. You are the man, Patty Lalim. <laughs> Thanks, Patty. Enough to join us. Thanks, Patty. 